Hey guys, I'm Chris. Welcome to A Glimpse Inside. Today, we're going to take a look outside at a project we're going to do where a new fence has to be installed plus a new gate. This spans about 10 feet. Two big gates are going to be custom made. Join us as we take a look at how it's done. All right, guys, well, let's get started. Here's the old dilapidated fence. It's definitely seen better days. As you can see, I'm starting to do some demo right there. I make my way up to my local big box store and pick up three of these eight foot panels that are six foot tall. Those are board on board panels. I make my way over here and I pick up about 30 of these six inch panels as well. I'm gonna use these to construct the gate. I also picked up some four by fours, some four by sixes, and some two by fours. More from those later. I put the four by fours in, mount the first panel, making sure those things are nice and level. As I put that first panel in, now it's time to measure out for the space that the gate is going to be. With the previous setup, the gate was only about six feet wide. I couldn't get a trailer back to the backyard. And so this way I'm making holes that are going to be 10 feet apart, keeping them nice and level. Those are actually four by sixes. I use four by sixes to anything that's going to support an actual swinging door. As I install this second fence panel, I realized I got to cut it down to size. A simple circular saw does the trick very nicely. One of the pickets got damaged, so I went ahead and replaced it with some of the extras that I bought at the home store. Again, here's more of the same. The pre-made panel had to be cut down to size. I find it easier to remove some of these pickets from the middle, put a little support board underneath, and go ahead and cut it with a circular saw again. This one took about two extra pickets, and we were in business. Went ahead and kept on with the board-on-board -board theme, put it in place, leveled it, and drove it home. Now I'm making my way inside the shop to go ahead and start constructing the gate. What I'm doing here is I'm making a series of cuts with my panel cutting jig. Eventually I'm going to make this a half lap joint. Taking off exactly half of the material of each 2x4 on each end and then knocking out the waste with a hammer. Now there's two ways to get this flush. One is the easy way. I take a little random orbit sander, that worked out pretty well. The other way is if you want to do some really, really fancy woodworking, is to use a chisel. Now check this out. <laughs> take your time here, make sure you keep the base of the chisel level with the half lap joint, and everything should work out nicely. Once I got all the half laps completed, I put some construction adhesive in all the joints and drove it home with some screws. I check for square, and man, am I overly excited about it being square. <laughs> and here I'm marking out for the 45 degree angle piece that's gonna go within the gate to keep it from sagging. I make those cuts at the chop saw, and go ahead and install them with some four inch screws. For a little extra security, I go ahead and install this galvanized plate, keeping those two boys joined closely together. Now I take my time here and I sand each individual one of these pickets. These pickets come very rough, and a lot of times when you build outdoor projects, you just kind of get them from the store and get to work and install them. But I want this to be a little bit nicer. If I wasn't able to spend the money on, say, cedar or something a little bit more, you know, luxurious, if you will, I tried to make these pickets be as nice as possible. Giving the attention to sanding each one in the long run sure made this project turn out a lot better than expected. The gates are simply constructed with brads and wood glue. And this last piece, I go ahead and flush trim it up. This piece is going to be the one that the gate hinges from. Now it's time to do a little surface prep. I lay down a bag of pea gravel and a bag of paver base because I'm about to put a 2x10 here for the base of the door opening. After hammering that last board in place, I follow it up with another 2x8. Now these are what they call green wood. These are actually made for ground contact and they're supposed to be impervious to moisture and water for a very long time. As I make sure this last piece is level, everything looks pretty good so far. Well, now it's time to install the gates. These gates, I'm not going to lie, they're very heavy. They're over 100 pounds each, so I use my apple box to kind of give me some leverage to get it clamped in place. And then I got these 13 and a half inch gate hinges. They should do the trick. They should hold the weight pretty well. I guess we'll see. 
All right, I got the thing clamped up. Now it's time to put that top hinge on. You know, the whole time I'm installing this, I'm just hoping and hoping this thing works. Hoping these hinges hold up. Now the moment of truth. And little victories like this, man, you gotta celebrate. Now I simply install the hinges on the other side the same way I did the left. Everything's looking pretty good. And the doors swing freely. This was a pretty cool moment in the project. So now I face the task of how are these doors going to be locked in place. Well, I put a backer board on the left door, creating when the right door shuts into it that they stay flush with each other. I go ahead and mount some gate hardware. Forgive me, it was very windy that day. The doors kept on moving back and forth. Now I make my way back into the shop and I go ahead and cut a 45 degree angle on one of the 1x6s that are going to be the base of the bottom of each gate. A quick sanding and it's ready to go. Now you might have been wondering why there was such a big gap between the door and the ground. Well here's why. When you swing the door out, it actually is going to hit the concrete. The concrete's about 5 inches above the base of the gate. So I had to accommodate that, leaving me a big gap in between. Now putting this 1x6 here is only going to cover that so much. I go ahead and install the next 1x6 on the right hand side and eventually you'll see the solution I come up with to kind of bridge that gap between the base and the bottom of the gate. I also picked up some pipe at the home center, some galvanized pipe. I picked up these 1 inch diameter pipes with a 90 degree elbow to join them and a 1 and a quarter inch collar. I mount the pipe in a bench vise, take the angle grinder to it and cut off some of the threads, kind of cleaning up the pipe a little bit. At this point, I make my way to the 12 inch disc sander, go ahead and clean it up with the sandpaper eraser and start grinding away some of those rough marks that the angle grinder left behind. I make my way to the belt sander and I kind of clean up the edges and put a small chamfer on each of the ends. I then cut a 45 degree angle at the edge of this 2x8 and attach it in place at the base of the gate. I take another 2x8 and cut another 45 degree angle, trimming off about an inch and a half off the back, giving me kind of a 45 degree angled speed bump to get into the backyard. Now that the gate's gap between the base and the gate itself has now been closed off to about a half an inch, it's now time to install the locking mechanism that's gonna keep this gate shut. I'm installing two of these pipe brackets, or horseshoe brackets if you will, to the pipe along the back of the gate, but it's just enough room for the pipe to move freely up and down. Now I trace out the mark where the pipe's gonna land, and I go ahead and take a portion of it and carve out a hole that's about two inches deep. This hole is going to hold that one and a quarter inch pipe that's going to give that pipe a nice landing area to keep that gate securely shut. That definitely took a lot of force, but at least I know it's in there and it's not going anywhere. And just like that, the pipe fits in there snug and the gate is completely locked. I love these projects where you just kind of follow your nose and come up with solutions on the fly. This solution, I'm actually pretty proud of. It turned out great and it worked really well. But here's one more piece I need. I need a place for the pipe to rest when the gate is swinging open. This little bracket here makes quick work of that. And here's one more look at just how this system works. Need to open it up, pull it up, rest it, put it back in. Works like a charm. Now moving on to put some gravel on the back side of this gate base to make sure that the landing area is nice and smooth for the vehicles and the trailers that are going to go back there. Forgive the mess, we're going through a small renovation right now. And at this point, I'm going to trim off these 4x4s, leaving just about an inch or two above the surface of the gate. You'll see why in just a second. I make a cut with my circular saw and finish it up with one of these Japanese hand saws. Essentially repeat this process on all the poles that need to be trimmed. Now I need to chamfer the edges at a 45 degree angle on the 4x6s that are on either side of the gate. 
I do this with a router and I come back up with a grinder with a sanding attachment. Makes pretty quick work of it. After mounting a four inch piece of two by four, it gives me ample room to put the solar lights that are gonna be on either side of the gate. And now I'm coming back to reinforce all these panels on the gate with screws. Again, they're just held in with glue and brads at the moment, but I always like to come back and reinforce outdoor projects with screws whenever I can. Also putting a nice little handle on it, giving it a nice finishing touch. And finally installing the permanent supports that are in between the 4x6s and the 4x4s, helping to prevent any sag that the gate will have over time. Well, here we are guys, it's all finished. It took me a few days to do. There's definitely other areas of this house that need to be taken care of, but this one is finally completed. Such a relief to get it done. Added some extra gravel just to be sure that the vehicles and lawnmowers to go back and forth have a nice landing spot to get back there. Really happy with how it turned out. I do want to say this, this fence will be painted white eventually once all the wood dries out. Also, here's the reason I left the 4x4s a little oversized, is to put a nice decorative cap on each one. A little spray paint to pay respect to the master maker himself. His channel's linked down below. Now one final look at the gate and... Oh, look who joined me. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to post some other videos we've done over here as well. And also, if you want to check on what we're doing in between project builds, check me out on Instagram at underscore a glimpse inside. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you on the next one, guys.